What's up, it's Phil from Fit Will Expose, and today's episode I'm very proud to share with you Josh Bryant. He's the owner of Jailhouse Strong, hands down one of my favorite YouTubers out there. You don't see a lot of YouTubers on my channel, that's because there's a lot of corny YouTubers out there, but Josh Bryant is hands down one of my favorite guys. I agree with a lot of his philosophies, and he's just a very innovative and curious guy. Uh, he's the owner of the Jailhouse Strong YouTube channel, he has a couple of books, he's a former powerlifter, former strongman. And he trains uh, bodybuilders, powerlifters, strongmen, and he's just a very successful trainer overall that you can learn a lot from. So, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Yeah, so, basically, uh, the theme of today's episode is going to be traps, delts, well, traps and upper back, delts, and triceps. Those are my favorite muscle right. groups. Those are the muscle groups that a lot of people on the internet are going crazy about on my channel, and oh. I'd, love to, I'd love to hear your philosophies about these muscles. And I already know a lot of your philosophies, but... I want to hear some elaborations and okay. You know. So, uh, so first off, I just want to ask you, like, uh, like your channel wise, like, um, what are your goals as far as like your channel, like progressing and just what keeps you motivated? Um, I f feel like um, since I got so busy training people, it's become a good medium to connect with people and share techniques because um, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, so you can't be training, you know, 500 people a day type of thing. So it's been a good way to kind of pass on and, and share with others what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But do uh, you still feel motivated to train yourself, like, as hard as you're training, like, your clients? And um, Yes and no, um, because, uh, like, in the sense of, like, physically, yes, but mentally, no. So, like, for instance, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, revolve my day around the training and, and that kind of thing, but, like, when I get there, I'll train as hard as I can, but when I was competing myself, every, everything revolves around what you're going to train that day, so, mm -hmm. we're now I'm not to that point, like, the focus is there, when I'm training, say, for, like, an hour, the focus is the same, but it's not going to be, like, everything, the lifestyle's not. Okay, but do you, do you still set like goals for yourself, like for aesthetics, uh, performance, and that kind of stuff, or you're more focused on just your clients? More focused on my clients, yeah. Okay, okay, yep. right. I understand. Okay, well, uh, I find it interesting because I probably started watching your channel maybe about six months ago. Okay. I started just developing my own philosophies on training and just pretty much utilizing what worked for me. And there's a lot yeah. of stuff that were like I just didn't really agree with, with, like the whole conventional way of looking at things. And I just started implementing all these philosophies, and, and it's they're basically gonna come out in a book that I'm dropping when I hit 10,000 subs called Silverback. You know, it's just cool. how to get as big and strong as possible as a drug-free lifter, or whatever. But uh, yeah, like um, for example, like, I'm really into like snatch grip lifts. I'm really into rear delt swings, um, tricep long head work, and like basically when I found your channel which um, the first video I saw on your channel was when you're talking about the rear delt swing and how you got it from John Meadows too. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just like, wow, okay, someone else who finally fucking knows what this exercise is, you know. Then I started looking into your other videos and I started, then I saw your back video where you're talking about back training. You're doing a, you're talking about snatch grip rack pulls below the kneecap. Sure. Probably my favorite back lift. And then I asked you about snatch grip high pulls. You're like, yeah, they're a great lift. I just started really digging deeper and deeper into your channel. And I just agree with a lot of the philosophies. I think we, we share a lot of similar beliefs, you know? Yeah, for sure. Great minds take alike. Yeah, yeah. And, like, uh, what I like about your channel, too, is that, like, you, you learn from everybody, you know? You take from all walks of life, and you're not, like, some just some ignorant trainer, you know? Like, uh, well, I think it's to be careful with on YouTube is a lot of people, um, they're trying to sell you their own, their own bullshit is what the problem. So what they're going to do is just they got one way of doing things, and mm -hmm. they're going to, like, structure everything so it adheres to like their way of doing it rather than trying to be open-minded and find out what's best yeah so they've already say for instance on this, the rear delt swings say they've made a video about never cheating on an exercise they're not going to try that because it will contradict what they're saying instead of just trying to find the truth of what's going to work best mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just crazy because there's just so much stuff to learn in the fitness world and i feel like as accomplished as you are you're still hungry for more and i could see like the hunger and you're always like looking for new ways to just perfect your system and you always sure. like, you always give shout outs to you always give credit where it's due you know you're not some guy just claiming that you invented all this stuff you know you shout out Paula Quinn you shout out John Meadows you shout out um, all these guys you know and then you put your little spin on things too and yeah it's just yeah anyway it's like uh, let's get to some questions now 
So, as far as the snatch grip lifts, like me, I've been talking about these snatch grip lifts on my channel yeah. for, forever, right? And right. I, I basically tell people that they um, they place more emphasis on the upper back, the traps, the rear delts, through a uh, protraction of the shoulder blades, and uh, they just emphasize that part of the back, upper back a lot more. So, if you take something like conventional deadlift, People are saying that it's a great full body exercise, you know, but no one's saying it's like the best upper back builder of all time. They're saying it's a great full body lift. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's sort of like a, like it's a Swiss army knife sort of like there's, yeah. it does multiple things well, but not really the best at any one thing. Yeah, and then you take something like the bench press, people aren't really saying it's the best tricep lift, but all of a sudden, if you narrow the grip, people are saying it's the best tricep exercise of all time. And I kind of look at the, the deadlift with the same philosophy. It's like all of a sudden you widen out the grip. It's yeah. It's like, it's amazing. Like, but I, I just want to sure. know, like, uh, what do you have to say about the snatch grip lifts, like, as far as, like, getting into more a bit more details? Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. So I think the key is just to do it where your mobility allows. So, like, you're saying, like, r below the knee, the great way where to, where to start. But, um, you know, because a lot of people aren't going to be able to keep a flat back when they get down to that, you know, the yeah. floor. Or, like, like, it's Paul Quinn's talked about doing them off a deficit where there's no doubt that's going to be effective. Um, but the flip, the flip side is how many people can actually get in a good position in the bottom part. So at the end of the day, what are you trying to work? So I think with what we're talking about more for the upper back, um, right below the knees, very good point for most people. And most people are going to be able to keep a pretty flat back and, um, mm -hmm. sort of goes the angle your arms are at just kind of goes with the angle of your traps. So, I mean, it, it just works. So, mm -hmm. and it's going to put posterior delts, you know, rhomboids, everything gets involved there. So I think. You know, it, it's one of those things where I hadn't even um, looked at it a long time ago. So, like, you know, I'm, I've been, say, like, for instance, like, studying kinesiology. It wasn't anything like that. I was just, all right, I'm going to try this out one day. And, wow, you know, I felt I couldn't believe how sore my upper back was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even my lats up, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It destroys the lats. But, um, so, you know, it's, like, it's sort of funny, like, to go out a little bit. Um, I would be interested to see if we could somehow contract the device that would be for traps upper back everything sort of like a um, uh, um, trap bar with really wide snatch grip handles kind of to be able to do farmers walks like that with wider handles I think it'd be a very interesting experiment so oh wow. well I, I, I just got back from the gym right now like a few minutes ago and uh, we, yeah. have, we have a trap bar at my work and it's like a semi snatch grip you know it's pretty wide and it feels and if you try yeah I like it I like it yeah. it's not like a snatch yeah. grip there but it's like it's, it's Definitely wider than your regular trap bar, you know? And the problem is if it became a real snatch grip with the trap bar, you'd be using such light weights anyways, it'd be kind of a waste of time. So I think what you're saying in that that vicinity would be the right range on how to do it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I know for me, like, I actually, uh, I learned about the snatch grip deadlift pretty much by accident. Like, I was doing a lot of, like, uh, rack pull variations and stuff, and I'm like, hey, yeah. let's, you could go so heavy on them, and I like them, but I want some pulls off the floor, you know? So then I started doing some band, sure. band deadlifts. But the setup was annoying. Me and my, my gym partner, we hated it. So I'm like, hey, fuck this. And then I just decided to just use a wide grip one day just for the hell of it. And my upper back lasts were sore for like a week. Then I started looking into like the Olympic weightlifters and I noticed they do the same thing. You see like guys like clock up, going like collar to collar. And like what I want to know is were you influenced by like some of the Olympic weightlifters to start like prescribing that to your clients? No, more so by guys like Paul Quinn and those kind of people. Okay. More okay. so actual Olympic lifters, which I obviously he's uh, done seminars and worked with Clo Club, but it was much before that. So yeah, not so much actual Olympic lifters, but more like some of the mentors like that. Mm -hmm. so. so, but like, um, let's say, I'll give you a rough question here, right? Let's say yep. someone's into like strictly uh, size, you know, he doesn't give, he doesn't care about going on a powerlifting stage, doesn't care about yeah. strong man. And his goal is just to get the, the biggest upper back and lats possible. Could you see the snatch grip deadlift being a main lift? Absolutely, 100%. So yeah. I think you could do, like, so say, like, I got that, um, you know, in one of my books, The Size and Strength Blueprint, they had, I got that um, deadlift encyclopedia program. If you went really heavy on that exact program with a snatch grip like we're talking about, yeah. um, e even though the reps are fairly low, I think you get a lot of size on that, a lot. So yeah. absolutely be, like, the mainstay of I I've done that with a ton of bodybuilders, too of making like the snatch grip. So say like the essence of what I've um, sort of the initial movement that I started was um, at least you know, kind of popular as power building, mm -hmm. per se. 
Um, that was one of that was that was kind of one of the it's like the, the whole idea in a nutshell is you're basically doing more hypertrophy work, but you're actively progressing in the core lift. Okay, so yeah. so like so the class example would be like you're you know doing a bunch of bodybuilding stuff for legs, but then you're actively trying to increase your squat at the same time. Yeah. But when you say core lift, it doesn't have to be like deadlift for back. It could be a snatch grip deadlift, and that's kind of what I've morphed to, you know, mm-hmm. over time. So then it becomes, yeah, absolutely, like that becomes like the mainstay thing. You're doing it week to week, switching the accessory work around more and more, and really not only trying to stay in a hyper traditional hypertrophy range, but actively trying to progress that weight up because um, – Olympic lifters in general don't have great physiques, but they have great upper backs, great traps. And, um, but we can make it better by getting like more time under tension and going heavier because they're having to, a lot of them aren't actually doing snatch grip deadlifts, they're doing snatches. So if we can actually do that snatch grip deadlift, get some time under tension and progress that up where we're going heavy for the sake of the snatch grip deadlift, just instead of trying to increase the snatch, I mean, it's kind of like a synergy, dude, of like, some amazing upper back and trap hypertrophy. It's almost like one of those things. If we had to make pick one lift to get all these areas, I'd, I'd say that'd be the one. Yeah, yeah sure. definitely. I agree too. I think it's it's such an underrated exercise. You know, you type snatch grip deadlift and like you see some of my videos pop up, and I'm not even like yeah. some known YouTuber. And it's, it's I find it crazy because there's so many bodybuilders out there that would benefit so much from snatch grip lifts. You know. Well, bodybuilding, the, the issue with it is, there's a big issue here, is on like you know, nutritional protocols, um, regular supplements, you know, illegal supplements, they're, they're like on the cutting edge of all this different stuff, but with training, there's so much stuff that's still in the dark ages, like, you know, they'll do everything else like in their life to revolve around bodybuilding, but to get yeah. them to try exercise a lot of times is like getting to pull teeth. I think that's why someone like John Meadows has some success. A lot of successes because he's very open-minded where most yeah. of them are not you mm-hmm. know it's like getting to pull teeth like hey why don't because i mean the way we're talking about snatch grip deadlift but a lot of people that are doing like a close you know the deadlift their hands are just as much as they can be outside their legs you know to not have the bar shape right there if they just widen their grip out say five inches on either side yeah it's such a training stimulus they don't because they're like okay i'm too inflexible to call her to call her fine just go in right outside the power ring if you've never done that. It's going to put a, I mean, it's going to be a, an upper back, you know, yeah. muscle damage you've never experienced in your life if you've never done that before. It doesn't have to be collar to collar to get a benefit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous because also uh, when you're, I've noticed when you're pulling off the floor with a snatch grip, you know, mm-hmm. you know people say like this, this stupid thing where, oh, the upper back and lats are only working to lock out weights, it's lower body at the bottom. Well, when you're doing a, like a snatch grip deadlift and you're really like you're tightening up your lats, you know, you're getting ready to really pull. It's trying to stabilize the weight for sure. Yeah, it's amazing, but it's just super underrated. I'm trying to like popularize it and I tell people all the time, get it to 500. It's going to make your back look different, you know. It's going to make a difference, you know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll help you in the mission. <laughs> yeah, so if, if anybody says it's full of shit, you know, I'll just mention your name, you know. <laughs> yeah. Josh Fine approves. <laughs> for sure, 100%. But here's an here's a, um, an important question though. So, regular deadlift should still be implemented to improve the snatch grip deadlift, right? To a point, but then, then it's like again, like what's the training purpose? How much time do you have and all that? Because, yeah, they can obviously if you can deadlift. Set, okay, so if we take this is a great question because um, I'm gonna get slightly off subject here. If that's okay to come back to that, so I always tell people, okay, you say. Let's just say, I mean, obviously, if you get stronger, you're going to put on size, assuming you're eating correctly. However, there's a bigger benefit to it. Like, so say if, if, like, let's just say the ideal, let's just for the argument, sake of argument here, say 12 reps is the ideal number you should do for, for a chest exercise for, for bodybuilding. Okay, you're going to do a hell of a lot more with 12 reps if you bench 405 than if you do 280, right? So you want to mm-hmm. So even though getting strong is not the end game, it's a means to an end. It's a very important means to that end. So with your deadlift, if you if you're able to do like again, this all goes back. If this is very important to you and you're allocating time to do it, absolutely, you're right because you're going to still increase your snatch grip by increase your deadlift. Because if you take somebody to deadlift 700, they've never done a snatch grip, and tell them to max out, they're going to do more than somebody that trains snatch grip religiously that deadlifts 500. You know, it's just going to be there's a certain point of where limit strength at the end of the day is going to be your base 
and for increasing limit strength, the number one of the number one building base building lifts is going to be deadlift. You know, I use the example we moved out to this house a year ago. I had movers, mm -hmm. but a lot of but I have all my weights, so I actually ended up doing the weights myself because they were too they couldn't handle it. Even though they're professional movers, I mean, I'm besides working out or uh, you know, I'm not like lifting really anything like manual labor. But since I'm so much stronger, I was able to outwork them, and mm -hmm. I never do it because my limit strength is so much higher and it's such a small relative percentage because if I'm able to deadlift 800, uh, you know, a 100-pound box is 12.5% of my max, where if he can only deadlift 200, it's 50% of his max. So the same concept applies to what we're talking about with snatch group deadlift here is your deadlift's going to not on a one-to-one -one basis. So if you're at 600 now, get to 700, you're 400, snatch group 500, it's not going to be like that. But there's going to be some transference, so you have to increase it. To help your snatch grip, so it's mm -hmm. not like that's where people go wrong in this whole game here. Is it's too much of an all or none, black or white type of mindset, and hardly ever in life or anything in training, things can be black and white. Like, you know, it's like yes, yeah, snatch grip's better for developing your upper back, fine, but that doesn't mean you should never deadlift either. <laughs> of, like, course, of course, of course. Yeah, of course, so. it has its benefits for sure. But uh, here. Give me one second. <laughs> All right, so uh, sure. okay, so in a lot of videos, you say yep. snatch grip deadlift is killer for the traps, it's killer for the lats, killer for upper back, and killer for the rear delts. Now, yep. I tell people that look, the snatch grip, snatch grip lifts in general, they're gonna like really thicken up your lats and upper back, for the most part, you know. But as far as the rear delts are concerned, I could, I personally don't feel my rear delts like working. Maybe I'm sure they're working to a certain extent. I'm saying as far as like growth and soreness and just like activation overall, I don't, I actually don't feel it. So how, how do your clients feel in your rear delts or? Yeah, I feel it more so. I think that's a good way to put it. It's working to a point. So more than like a regular deadlift because the angle where your hands are at. So I don't think, yeah, I absolutely agree. If you're trying to like maximize the size of your rear delts, it's not like, oh yeah, just go ahead and do this and you're taken care of. It's just, I'm thinking it hits it more than a regular deadlift. Right, regular deadlift, okay. Yeah, so, and then plus, I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say. There is a bit of salesmanship here, too, because I'm trying to get you to try it. So, <laughs> I'm going to see every benefit it has. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah like, exactly, I told exactly. you, if you're, if you're wanting to maximize the high perch for your rear delts and that's all you do, you're not going to be happy with the results. But it would aid in getting that high perch speed better than a regular deadlift, too. Exactly, so it's not, exactly. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. But I, what I find so funny is that, like, I guess some people in my comment sections, my video, like like uh, powerlifters sometimes, will be like, Phil, the snatch grip deadlift is not the way to go if you want to pick up your back because you could go so much heavier with the conventional deadlift. And I tell them, I'm like, it's not the same thing. Like the as far as like, just the activation that you get and just just the feel that you get overall, it just fires different muscles in the upper back and the lats, you know? Yeah. Well, you can also fire back the the. A three inch rack length, three. If you're in a, those power rack and you bench press the bar three inches, you can do a hell of a lot more than a full range of motion bench. Doesn't mean it's better, you know. So I mean, it's a range of motion thing too. Because besides the amount of, um, you know, besides the amount of just weight you're lifting, it's the 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 range of motion too, you know, and then the way you're holding it too. So like a, a close grip bench is different than a wide grip bench. So I mean, it's just it's it's just different too, and. And it goes back to what we're saying about that all or none mindset of, okay, you have to do it my way or I have to do it your way. Well, mm -hmm. if you're about results, you're like a whore. You'll do whatever way you have to do. Yeah. Like sometimes I, like when I was like really going crazy, when I first discovered the snatch grip lifts, I was doing little experiments where I would just do YouTube searches and I would take like, you know, 10 to 20 deadlifters, just random ones, you know, drug free or not, who do mm -hmm. like 545. And in my opinion... This, your snatch grip deadlift compared to your conventional, I see like a fifty to hundred pound like difference. You know, that's, that's yeah. from from what I personally see. You know, from like different leverages and like anthropometry and stuff. But like I've I've seen out of those twenty people who I saw with my little experiment, there's a lot of pullers who pull five forty five for one, don't have the the biggest backs around. You know, I'm with you. But at the same time. I never saw, like, out of the 20 that I saw for, uh, who, who snatch grip deadlift 500 pounds, none of them had small backs. They all had thick backs. They all had wide backs. And 
I think that says something, you know. Interesting. If you, I don't know if you did this or not, but if you like actually took like some pictures and like flashed them up like a kind of a slideshow to show that, that's pretty interesting. I mean, I I would believe it, but for sure. But it'd be interesting to like actually see it like played out in front of people's faces because oh, I think sorry. you're right about. It. Go to tons of powerlifting meets. There's people that deadlift even 600 pounds that don't even look like they lift weights. I mean, I'll be me. It's impressive, but there are people. They deadlift over 600 that don't look like they lift weights. They do exist. Well, uh, I see my teammates. Well, unfortunately, I deleted the folder of like uh, of the data. Yeah. Because <laughs> then I'm just like, okay, hey, I don't care. This is this is this is the shit. I just deleted it. You know. But sure. Anyways, like uh, okay, now I want to talk about the since we're talking about snatch grips, uh, the snatch grip high pull. Because I remember a couple weeks ago I, I mentioned it to you. And you said, yeah. you're, you said you're a big advocate of it. I got this lift from, uh, obviously I didn't make it up, I got it from Christian Thibodeau. He's a big advocate mm -hmm. of it. I saw a video of him doing 405, and like he's saying it did more for his traps than anything else, you know? And he likes to do his snatch grip high pulls in the hang, for the most part. He pulls in the floor yeah. too, he does it below the knee, but for muscle building purposes, for the most part, he, he pulls a lot from the hang. And um, Yeah, see... I haven't used these as much as you guys have. I was just saying, basically, in I know they will work in theory, but I haven't used them as much to be like touting it to the extent you are. So, yeah. okay, I, I I can see how, that's what I was saying. The message, I definitely think it does work from what I've observed, but I haven't used it enough to be like you know on the internet okay. being like this is the way to go. But you know, I've seen it work for other people a lot. I just haven't used it a lot because okay. a lot of the guys I'm learning, working with are going to, like, especially the bodybuilders, it's going to be this the snatch curve deadlifts easier for them to do. So we're hitting it that way, you know, uh, out of just the learning curve part too. So they're able to handle it a lot easier. So, but one thing I've used, uh, you know, at Kazmaier, mm -hmm. Bill Kazmaier, a lot of, he did a lot of snatch grip shrugs. I got yeah, an interview. I heard, I heard, yeah, I watched it, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so that was pretty interesting. So I experimented with those just pretty light a couple of weeks ago myself, and um, I, I used to do those a lot and do them with people more often. I, I kind of just got out of the mix somehow. I don't know how because they worked, and, and that was – I mean, I was pretty dang sore from those from not going super heavy. Yeah, he, he did what, like 650 for sets of 50 or something like that? Like, yeah, something crazy, yeah. Something crazy, yeah. It, make, it makes sense, and like – but you see, that's another testimonial of another guy. Of another guy, and like he just so happens to have one of the biggest backs of all time. You know, he's a, another big yeah. advocate of strongman of uh, snatch grips. Pick up, pick up that. Um, I forget what, what what issue it was, but one of the old school powerful USA's. They have him on a picture with his, um, you know, front shot, and I mean, you, you, those traps are kind of unparalleled, dude. <laughs> oh my god, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, kid, well. I apologize to my to my viewers. You know, this is more of a personal question for me. But uh, if I want to improve my snatch grip, my snatch grip high pull, like, because you know, you know, there's different phases. You know, there's like more of like the low pull, which is more yeah. like uh, it's like the lower chest, and then like Christian Thibodeau says, the high pull you're pulling more towards like your clavicle, like neck area. You know, well, I found that like uh, I've actually plateaued a bit. Like, I want to reach like the four or five status, like like Christian Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like in the like in the low 300s now, and I find that I can easily get the weight to my my lower chest, but it's just from getting it to the lower chest to like the to the neck that I'm really struggling with. And I was I wanted to know if you have any like exercises you recommend. What do you feel is holding you back there? What's it feel like is holding you back? What do I feel like is holding me back? Yeah. Uh, I feel like my assistance exercises just aren't there. You know. One thing that I've tried that, that, that does, like I'm still experimenting there, that has been helping me, I find is, uh, is like a clean grip snatches, because it helps, it's like a high pull, but it takes it one step further. Yeah, yeah. Those have been helping me there. But I've noticed when I do like these heavy shrugs and these heavy high pull, and these heavy low pulls, it has like fuck all carry over to my, to my high pull. So. Yeah, the, one thing would be interesting to try would be like some isometrics up there. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. That's what would be like, but again, so let me reiterate, I've not like built master people like most other areas, so this is all in theory, but I think if you can mimic the positioning pretty good, you could get like a lot of isometrics up there, and even if it didn't help you, I think it would give you some hypertrophy anyways, because mm -hmm. you, you got to think about it, what's holding you back so you can produce 
fifteen percent more force on average for about fifteen you know times longer because you're in that sticking point. So I mean, that's my go-to when something is just there. No assistance exercises are doing the trick. Like to mm -hmm. so say, like let's just go back to bench pressing. You know, if nothing you're doing, you're hitting your try like your last inch and a half is your sticking point. You can't lock the weight out. So you're hitting your triceps every conceivable angle type of accessory movement, and it ain't go, it ain't working. That's what's throwing the isometrics. So for people that don't know what we're talking about here, I got some of these examples on my channel of doing it for bench press and deadlift. Hadn't had as good of a luck with squat for whatever reason. I mean, it's okay. It still works for squat, but not deadlift and bench press has been monumental mm -hmm. in how much. And uh, so you're, you'd you be pulling against whatever point, like, and say, you know, bench press, so I'm stuck right here. I'd be pushing as hard as I can at that sticking point against an immovable object, against the pins. So yeah. I know some of the old school guys did stuff like that. Like if you go back to, um, you know, like Bill March, those kind of guys from York Barbell Club. So their lifts weren't as high as the guys today. However, a lot of times they had better physiques too. So, I mean, that would be if, if, if all else failed. I mean, I could definitely see the argument against it of like developing faulty motor patterns, whatnot. So what I would do if I was you is get that lift isometrically at that spot and then immediately superset it with the actual lift. The okay. With a high pull. So you go six seconds there, hard as you can, try to break the pins, rest briefly, then do the movement with a lighter weight. So say you're stuck at 300s, you know, do like 225 for a couple of reps, just really trying to get perfect form, real explosive, all that stuff. And go back and forth like that three or four times, and I think you could remedy the sticking point possibly by that. Because so I saw you did uh, in your arm series, you did that with like the close grip bench. Yeah, and that for the arm, that was for pure hypertrophy because that I mean it would work for this, but um, the the diff the thing is right there is like so a lot of these people that I'm getting, so it's gonna be bodybuilders, powerful strongmen. So a lot of the bodybuilders. Um, They've never trained for any kind of real strength or power. So, like, if you say, okay, like, you know, a lot of people say isometrics don't do any hypertrophy, which um, is not true, for one. And for two, the studies that show they do it is just slightly less. However, if someone's never been exposed to this stimulus, they're going to get a hell of a lot out of it. So, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys have never trained any kind of maximal force production like that. So, it just it makes them grow like a dang wildfire because – they're uh, they've never been exposed to it before so mm -hmm. but that in that particular instance you're talking about was that was just more for pure hypertrophy than actually trying to get rid of a sticking point i got some other ones up there that are just specifically showing how to do it so you can see like and one of them you know sometimes you got to see it one, a couple of them on the bench press we're actually holding the rack down because with big guys because it's not bolted the floor because i mean the whole point of these isometrics is you got to try to break the pins, dude. It can't be. If you're going to half-ass it, it's kind of a waste of time, or it's a total waste of time because it's truly, like most exercises, you'll get something out of it, even if you weren't going all out. This is one of those ones where, you like they always joke, coaches always say you're only tre cheating yourself. Mm -hmm. You're truly only cheating yourself if you don't go balls out. So you'd recommend if, I'm, if my sticking point is around, like, from the chest up, that I just set the pins and I, I go in, like, a snatch grip uh Position, I just keep pulling, like. Yeah, you just keep pulling. And I do, I do like what sets of like uh, five seconds. You said five, six seconds. Six seconds or so, five to six seconds would be good. And then. Um, and that's the set. Like I just hold it for six seconds and then I move on to a snatch grip high pull. Oh fuck. Hello? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Oh, yeah, now I guess you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you heard what I said. No, I, I just, last thing I heard, we were talking about that, and then I didn't hear anything else. Uh -oh. My bad. Oh, this is a glitch. But okay, uh, I would just um, grab with a snatch grip and pretty much just, what, pull against the pins for six seconds? Yes. And then you would rest, say, a minute or so, then do the actual movement right after. Okay. Yeah, and this, so this could apply for anything. So this doesn't have to be for this. It could be for if you wanted to get your barbell curl up, you could do the same exact thing. If you want to get your deadlift up, you do the same exact thing. Okay. Um, 
but it actually evolved uh, somewhat the way I'm saying. Um, if you read like Bob Hoffman's stuff from back in the day, they called it functional isometrics. And mm -hmm. like you said earlier, like borrowing stuff from other people and then putting your own twist on it. The twist I got on it was I was reading um, an old school Russian manual. They were saying the downfall of the isometrics was it doesn't like it can screw up the motor pattern. So like basically you're saying if you just produce all that force in that one spot, you can screw up the actual movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I started doing the actual movement right after to maximize the transference. And you get a PAP effect from it. So you can actually, if you wait a minute or so, you can do more, you can be more explosive. So like if you're doing what we're talking about here, we'll say 250, try mm -hmm. it with 250, like just normal, then try it like this. And assuming you're rested, you'll be able to do the 250 more with more force. I mean, before um, Jeremy Horst was set one of his world records in the bench press, I actually had him do this backstage um, before the lift. He um, we put like 800 pounds. It's when he did the um, the 672 at um, 242. He did it. We, mm -hmm. so we went backstage and put like 800 pounds on the bar because um, they didn't have a power rack. We just did it in, on a um, on a bench press. And set it a little bit lower. I stood in the middle, pushing down as hard as I could. Had two other people on the sides pushing down so I couldn't lift it up. Had him contract as hard as he could for like um, six seconds. Waited like um, seven minutes. Went out there, broke the world record like it was nothing. Just ran out of attempts that day. Wow. But the snatch grip, uh, the snatch grip holds yeah. that you're talking about in the position. It's obviously with an empty bar, right? Yeah, but don't. Okay. But here's, dude. I know. I know. I'm being a broken record here. You, don't you, call. You, you break it. You break the. Yeah, holds. It's not a hold. It's hold. Not a hold. Yeah. Pass, passivity or like holding ground, dude. You want to break them. I'm gonna break the. I'm gonna break the pins. All right. Pins. <laughs> All Embed right. that time seriously because you get nothing out of it otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. You. Uh, you say in your videos a lot. Like you really. Uh, you really highlight that point that you want to break the pins. So. Well, I'll keep you posted well, about it. I'll see on yeah. Keep me posted on how it goes. I'll see. But it's funny on on deadlifts. There's people that think they're doing the same thing. So say for instance, they'll do like their deadlift holds. You, you know what I'm talking about? They just hold it like yeah. in midair. That's not producing more force. All you're doing is produce. If you do it on the way up, you're just producing enough force not to go down. Even worse, people lift the weight up and they stop on the way down. That's not. That's not. You got to program your central nervous system. To not only encounter the sticking point, but like attack it aggressively. Otherwise, it's like exactly. reactionary, and and you're missing the benefit. You you know, just a big circle jerk. Otherwise, and uh, yeah. I I personally like I like your I like your way of thinking too because I see a lot of deadlifters out there who they do the pause deadlift and you know they'll just pause it, but they're not yeah. actually moving. And like, but at the same time, it does work for a lot of people. I think like Pete Rubich does it. It, does. it works. works. But I think I can see I can see why yours works your your method works a lot too you know. Yeah, I think this is just better. So that way that that's I think if you do the way we're talking about the holds, you got to do them on the way up though. Because the reason you do them on the way up because you hold at that weak point, then you're you're already weak there, so you're even weaker because you're static holding it. Then you explode up. That's gonna get transference. You want to do it in the way up though, so it's like a, oh, it's really? a concentric, concentric isometric contrast. An eccentric isometric contrast on those two for bodybuilding, say like on a on a like a good example would be for chest on a um, hammer strength incline press. What they'll do, lift the weight up and then come down and hold it at different spots on the way down. Because at that point you're only going for size. We're talking about just like raw dog, you know, strong yeah. strength, a different whole different animal. So so let's say someone's really weak right at the bottom of a snatch grip deadlift. I'm talking like the first four or five inches, would you recommend uh, like these, these not these holds, but like these, um, these isometrics you're talking about where right at the bottom? You could do that and you, this would all, that was where it also would be then just doing the deadlift too, huh? Just lifting up right there to get stronger at that point besides okay. the holds. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would say um, at that point you got a few more options. Your point, you don't, sounds like you're running out of options, so you got to try something new. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always open to new ideas, you know. But you sound like you've been trying a lot of stuff already, right? Not not as much as you think, to be honest. Okay, all right, all right. I thought you had been, okay. No, no, but... I'm going to try this because, I, I mean, like I said, I've never actually done it with anybody like we're talking about, so 
I could be dead wrong, and I'd love to be dead wrong. So you tell me not so I don't give this advice to somebody else. But <laughs> I don't think it will work. Mm -hmm. No, it's just trial and error, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, but, yeah. but anyways, we've been talking a lot about like the snatch grip lifts, and I want to move more a bit more towards like the rear delts because I just yep. started. I started a series called uh, "How to Roll Your Way to Freaky Rear Delts." Because a lot of people out there, they think that the only way to build rear delts is by uh, flies and, and swings which I and face pulls, which are amazing. And I actually do advocate those lifts. But people think that rows don't do anything for the rear delts. And I'm telling people that, look, like, horizontal abduction, that's one of uh, the functions of the rear delts. You know, it's kind of yeah, like, sure. and if you have your elbows out really wide on something like a barbell row or like, you know, like a wide grip T-bar row. Um, or even like a chest. I like for that too when you're saying it's like the chest supported... Um incline row um with the hands pronated wide out yeah yeah it with does dumbbells. Hit, yeah it does hit the rear delts like and a lot of, i feel like it's a very um, i feel like rows with with the um, wide elbows like elbows out grip they're very underrated um rear delt builders you know it's funny you say that because like um so um i was trying to show i got a whole you know say so a whole library here of tons of books on and they're all about bodybuilding and strength training so <laughs> a lot of the old school stuff is um if you read some of the old now i now again i wouldn't advocate this i think you need both but a lot of the older books like the 80s and before talk about rear delts like you don't need to train them as long as you're, you're rowing like you're saying i think you're gonna maximize it by doing both of course of course oh, definitely it was funny because, like, the prevailing thought now is you just have to isolate them. And um, if you're doing swings, you're already pretty innovative. And, and that's, like, you know, getting to the point of, like, craziness. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the old school thought was, like, a lot of it was just row, you know, row your way to rear delts. So there's definitely, in my opinion, some truth, a lot of truth to what you're saying. And I think you got it right of mixing the two together. And I think that's the key right there is – you know, like we talked about earlier, not being all or none. Like you mm -hmm. have, to, you have to do both. But um, I'm gonna check out. Uh, I haven't seen your series yet. I'll definitely check it out because I, I agree with that, obviously. Yeah, for sure, and especially. Um, yeah, actually, I even got one one tip from uh, Athlete Next. Okay. Well, well, I, well, someone told me about it, and I used it in the video, and then they're like, "Oh, you bit it from Athlete Next." I'm like, "Okay, well, I guess I did," you know. But uh, Athlete Next, he actually recommends when you do a dumbbell rows. You have your elbows out, and you basically supinate at the top because because external rotation is one of the functions of the rear delts, and get like greater activation that way. But uh, but I just want to know from your and you. Show me again. Say do it again. Okay. Um. I, I, sorry. What? No, I can't see what your arm did. That's what. Okay. Like athlete next, he basically says when you're doing your dumbbell rows, uh huh, as opposed to just having it, you know, close to your lat with like a neutral grip. He recommends you have the elbow out and you basically supinate at the top. Okay. For rear delts. Whatever. Interesting. But, yeah. It but, makes uh, it. I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, but, but I, I just want like it's basically a question though. I want to know in your opinion. Right. Field was talking a lot about that. Um, also, um, was about rowing for rear delts. That's we used to talk a lot about doing them. Um, like I said on the incline wide. You're in our. We got a book. Um, called um what the hell is it called complete guide to dumbbell training we did together and um yeah that was one of the rear one of the lifts we talked about was the the a lot was the wide grip not wide grip of dumbbells but like the pronated elbows out chest supported um you know rows mm -hmm. but um but let's let's say someone comes to you right and they want you to coach them and uh their goal is just to get the, the biggest rear delts possible how would you recommend that they roll? Would you, for example, would you recommend that they roll like uh, do regular barbell rows with like you know one second hold the top, squeeze the rear delts, or do you recommend just regular barbell rows with like elbows out and just um, more of like a it's not a sloppy tempo, but just like a faster tempo without the holds? Would I would do the slop the faster sloppier, and then what I just said with the the ones with the hold at the top, so the pronated ones you'd actually hold at the top, and might even emphasize the negative on the way down depending on the person. So I would do a combination of like a strict row, let's, I guess it's a stricter one, like I'm saying, where you're really squeezing, emphasizing versus one where there's more movement. And then, of course, hitting the rear delts uh, directly. Yeah. I think also hit the rear delts um, pretty frequently, too, if you're not doing like real heavy rows. Um, even rowing, I mean, dude, this would be a whole other conversation, but a lot of my top people, 
that have like set world records and stuff, I got them doing, you know, upper back, you know, many times, like five times a week. It's just the, the issue becomes if you're not doing it chest support, like your rowing becomes non chest supported. So like, you know, obviously you're doing like some, you know, power rows, pendulum rows, Yates rows or something real heavy, you know, five times a week, you ain't going to be deadlifting world records anytime soon. But when you're chest supported, strict, things like that, it'll hit this stuff a lot. Oh, yeah. oh, of course, of course. I was, I was about to drop a video on that, that, that same topic, how, like, uh, the upper back and lats could take, like, so much abuse, like... Well, all kinds of people in jail are doing, like, pull-ups every single day, you know? Um, all kinds of gymnasts that would, uh, many of them would win uh, natural bodybuilding contests at that that don't even eat right, like, they don't eat a bodybuilding diet, mm -hmm. like, have just flared out lats and stuff, and they, I mean... It, well, the stuff they do is much harder than like a every day is much harder than a damn pull up. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, you could definitely um, that that would be a good video to make because you can cite me on this. I've a lot of people. I have them doing something for their upper back every time they step or step into the gym. <laughs> but uh, I basically I, yeah I basically made that series because I was just like. I'm just pissed off at having small rear delts, and I just started looking at everybody. Yeah. Just, just everybody's rear delt training in general, and I, I just noticed everybody's just babying the rear delts, you know? You see them going so heavy with, like, the front delts, doing their over, overhead presses, push presses, and all this stuff. And the rear delts, all they do is, like, three sets of band face pulls at the end of a workout, you know? Yeah, some light reverse pec deck or something. Yeah, like. some light reverse pec deck. And then, worst of all, you see a lot of, like, these, these, these guys on a bunch of gear who don't even train the rear delts. They're just doing, like, front, front work and side work. They ignore the rear delts completely. And it's, like, I feel like, especially if you're natural, like, and if you yeah. really want to get that 3D look, or not 3D, but you want to get, like, you know, more of, like, um, that pop, you know, and you're not rowing, I feel like you're leaving so much rear delt potential on the table. The, the the thing is, if you're natural too, um, the what you gotta keep in mind is the the steroids are gonna make your um, they're gonna really do a number on your shoulders and traps. So um, by default, without even doing anything correctly, they just they make those muscles grow more than say your legs. I mean, so there's actually research on it. So you could be stupid on juice and have okay development here. So if you are on juice. You better you have should have some freaky traps and delts because you're getting a a nice boost just by the injection. Injection, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, so if you're natural, you don't get that freebie. You're not getting that get out of jail free card. You got to do it all yourself. So you better be intelligent how you're training it. And if you're juiced, I mean, shit, you you you, could be, you know you be, you should look like a an action figure. Yeah, oh, for sure. If you have, so, if, you have the, if you have the drugs, you have the genetics, and you're also implementing like the most optimal like uh, approaches to really hit the rear delts. It's a wrap. It, it's it's scary. So it's then we got. I got like um, we're at 45 minutes. However, we got to want to wrap. Can we wrap up here pretty quick? Yeah, yeah well, I'll make it quick. So and I, we can do this again another time, Judge. Yeah, for sure, for know. sure, for sure. So uh, how much time do you have left? I like uh, the delta triceps, and that's it. Well, I'm about at noon right now. Okay. So, uh, my time, so kind of got to wrap it up now if it's okay. We could maybe do another time or something. Sure, sure, no problem. Okay. No problem. Sorry about that. I was... But we got we got a bit carried away with the snatch group. <laughs> oh, it's good. So it's fine. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, let me know what's up, and I'll share it and stuff. So perfect, perfect, bro. So okay. uh, all right, man. So uh, everybody, go subscribe to Jill How Strong. We'll most likely make a part two <laughs> yeah, sure. about delts and triceps. So the theme of this episode is pretty much just upper back, rear delts. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and let us know your feedback. So Thank you. Let me know what's up. All right, cool. All right, Later. cool. Thanks Bye. a lot, bro. Peace out. Okay, Peace out. Thank you.